Hi, Lee Veras here, bringing you Photoshop tips and techniques for teachers and students. Today's rant uh, is going to be a, a product shot. We're going to examine a product shot with a, a very interesting lighting uh, arrangement. And we're going to use advanced layer blending to blend different angles of light together to create a very sophisticated sort of lighting effect. All right, let's take a look. This tutorial examines advanced blending techniques to combine different lighting directions into one image. We'll use layer blend modes instead of layer masks to combine elements. We'll use the pen tool to create a path and then a selection. We'll use the LAB color space to add color saturation by putting a curve into overlay mode and blend into the A and B channels. We'll create a smart object to add that extra saturation to the RGB document. OK, let's get going. All right, so uh, this, uh, this is a shot uh, from a job that my wife, the incomparable Bobby Lane, did uh, a couple years ago. It's sort of a catalog uh, uh, shoot for uh, a company that does, uh, I, I believe this is airline parts. And uh, so the goal is to some, somehow glamorize these widgets. And, uh, uh, you know, she's done a pretty good job with the lighting here. It's, and it's really making these things look pretty sexy. Uh, now, of course, uh, this is not what this looked like at all in the beginning. In fact, uh, it, the, it looked like this. Here's, these are the raw shots. So this is what this stuff looks like. And we have three different lighting directions here, all achieving slightly different things. So, so starting over on the left here, this is for this pool of light. Um, the very low angle of light here, we were going to put this, use this for creating the red highlights. And then here's uh, the nice uh, light for uh, the nice highlights on the metal parts. Um, so the trick here in Photoshop is to combine all these different lighting elements together using uh, advanced blending. So we're going to blend into the different channels. We're going to blend using advanced blending options and, and using layer blend modes. And we're going to all blend this all together. So uh, I'm going to open up all three of these in Photoshop. So we select them all in Lightroom and then go edit in. Go past all this other software down here to open as layers in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them into Photoshop as layers, and we will pop right in there. OK, and here they are. Layers coming in. And uh, so here's our pool of light. It's right now, it just came in on the top. Uh, now, I want this pool of light because my goal is to get get it to look like this, right? Uh, we're not even close to that here. But uh, so I'm going to colorize this layer, and I'm going to put that at, at the bottom here. So we'll turn off those other layers. So I want this to be blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to use blending options to achieve that. So I'm using these blending options, uh, which we get at from the layer flyaway uh, the layer options fly away here, right in the middle, blending options, and we get this dialog uh, <laughs> kind of unintuitively named layer style, but really it's blending options that we're, we're going for here. And you notice the channels here. I can actually uncheck the red channel, and then I'm being, uh, this, this layer is being placed in just the green and blue channel. If I uncheck the green, it's just in the blue channel. So we need to brighten this up a bit. I'm going to uh, duplicate this. And maybe we'll screen it. Again, it's only going into the blue channel. So we're really getting kind of a bright uh, a blue effect here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to add in, uh, we're going to add the red color, right? So here's the red. I'm going to make this layer red. So how, how do I do that? Well, if we can put these two layers 
into the blue channel. I can put this one into the red channel the same way. And here's a shortcut for getting at those blending options. If I just double click in this empty area here of this layer, I'll get those blending options. And this time I'll uncheck the blue and green. And now I've got a really dramatic uh, colored rendition here. I need this blue to be a bit brighter. Um, so I'm thinking uh, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this layer. And this time I, I, I can't get it any brighter until unless I add some uh, light into one of the other channels. So I'm going to go and double click. See the little symbol here it means that I've got some blending options applied. I'm going to double click that to get into the blending options. And uh, instead of putting this one into the blue, I'm going to put it into the green and we'll reduce the opacity of it. Uh, you know, something like something like this, maybe 60, 70 percent, because I like even numbers. OK, and that's starting to look more like what I what I want. And here's our other layer. That's for my bright, my white light. Um, but I want to blend it. I, I don't want to have to do masking as much as I, I kind of want to avoid that as much as possible. So I'm going to use layer blending mode and we'll pick lighten. And what that's going to do is just place the elements of anything in this layer that can make the underlying layer lighter will be given favor. So it, it's blending in just the brighter, those highlights, those white highlights. Uh, but it's also blending a little bit of that gray back over it. Uh, and that's because this underlying layer is perhaps not bright enough. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a curve here. Uh, oops, let's get my adjustment. I'll put a curve in. And uh, we're curving underneath this top white light layer to make this blue a little bit brighter. So I'm going to kind of brighten it up a bit here and perhaps brighten the green up just a little bit because it's looking a little kind of purple to me. All right. Well, that's starting to that's starting to work. That's starting to work here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to bring these out and have them uh, be, instead of blue like this, I need them to be uh, uh, gray. So it's going to require a selection. So let's, let's zoom in here. Okay. You know, I've done this before, and I realize that um, none of these uh, selection tools are going to really do a good job with this and uh, as much as I'd like to use something like the object selection tool or the quick mask tool I know that I'm just not it, it, it's it these there isn't enough difference in tone between this area and this area that I just can't auto select anything so I'm going to use the pen tool and uh, um, this this tool is uh, you know it takes a little getting used to you even get the little, I can see these little tool tips coming up in here. Um, so I know how to do this really quick, so I'm just going to do that for you. So as you can see, uh, I'm have you know the the blue, <laughs> the the blue path is uh, perhaps a little difficult to see here. So uh, as I'm editing this class, and I'll uh, you know this I'll I'll speed this up for um, for the the video here. Um, but uh, because I'm using a blue line against a blue object, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble seeing it. So um, over here, under this little cog wheel, you can change the color of the path. So let's let's go for a light red. And now I can easily see it. Okay, so let's we'll finish this off. I'll speed it up.
All right, now that I've got those all selected, uh, we're going to go back here to the, the path and save the path. Okay, and then uh, we're going to make this path into a selection. Give it like a one pi pixel feather. And now this, uh, we're going to put a channel mixer adjustment to turn this into grayscale. So I, with the act of selection, all I need to do is create a new channel mixer adjustment. And uh, let's, uh, let's, we're going to change it to monochrome. And uh, it doesn't really matter here how we blend it, but I've, I'm just going to add, make it a little bit brighter. Um, Okay, like that. That looks pretty good. And uh, now we're getting pretty close. Uh, I think I want a little richness, a little more richness in the color. So I'm going to duplicate this. And uh, we're going to use turn the duplicate into LAB because that's really good for enhancing the saturation. If I could spell properly here and so now I'm going to convert this from uh, normal RGB to LAB and we'll put uh, a curve on it this is my my little trick for getting uber saturation and uh, we're going to put the curve in overlay mode and you notice how contrasty and colorful it gets and here's a, another trick for our advanced blending option um, get over there to my blending options and instead of we'll uncheck the L so it's going to have no effect on the uh, the contrast but because the A and the B are being affected by this curve it's it's really enhancing that that the the color uh, giving me a more saturated reds and bringing out the yellow in in this uh, in this um, color so uh, at this point, um, that's let's bring this back onto um, the color image. So I'm going to select both of these and convert that to a smart object. And the reason I'm doing that is that uh, I'm going to now drag this back on top of the uh, the RGB document. So I'm going to hold down the shift key while I using the move tool to drag this smart object onto the RGB document. And this is going to be my color. So I'm going to change this to color mode. And this way it's like if it's too, you know, if I think it's too much, maybe I can reduce the opacity of that. Uh, and if I want to edit this color, I can uh, double click on it and it will open up the, the original uh, LABs here. Well, let me throw this document away. I'll demonstrate that. So if I decide, you know, I want to do something, I want to edit this color a little bit, I can double click on this. This is the LAB document here, LAB color in an RGB document. That's what the beauty of this smart object is. If I double click on it, it will open it up. Now here's here's my smart object again, uh, but now I have the curve and I can make a change here. Let's see if I can, um, let's edit the B a little bit. 
and uh, we're going to make that yellow a little bit brighter. Just putting some yellow into this. Uh, and uh, we can make the, the, the blue not quite so intense. So I'm just editing the LAB document. And uh, now uh, when I save this, I'm really saving it back into this image, right? So you can see I, that's how I picked up that extra color there. But uh, I'm going to undo that. So we'll just, let's see, I can just uh, go back to this, just one step there. And uh, the rest of this now is, is a, a matter of retouching. So here we have a, a lot of extra layers of retouching here. Um, and uh, spotting and then there's sharpening and there's a little bit of hue saturation on it just to kind of finish it off but you could have, you can see how with all these 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 layers of uh, uh, these layers blended together I was able to achieve a very sophisticated lighting effect that uh, just was really not present in the original uh, photography so again, beauty of, of the um, blending options. Let's look at, the, look at a review here. So we saw how to use advanced blending options to blend into the blue and red channels selectively. We use the lighten blend mode to add highlights from another shot without needing a layer mask. We use the pen tool to create a path and a selection. And we saw how to change the color of the path for better visibility. We duplicated the document and converted that into LAB so that we could add saturation by putting a flat curve adjustment layer into overlay blend mode and blending into just the A and B channels. Finally, we turned those LAB layers into a smart object that we dragged back into the RGB document for enhanced color. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. If you have any questions or you'd like to see more detail about any of the techniques I touched on in this project, please let me know in the comments. You can always find more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video, and please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and ring the bell so that you don't miss any rants in the future. Please consider following me on Instagram. And I have two books in print available on Amazon in Kindle, as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure and the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school at ferris.com. Look under the education menu for online courses and pick from 16 courses covering all aspects of post-production, workflow, retouching, and special effects, including my latest course on black and white mastery, now at a low introductory price of just $20. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.